Storygram Network. Hello, we are the Sonoma Community Center podcast, a place of creativity, connection, and community. We highlight the artists, teachers, and the community that come through the doors of our historic brick building, often called the heart of Sonoma. We share local tips and shout outs to our home, Sonoma Valley. And we are your hosts, Molly Spencer. Gerardo Diaz. We are the engagement team of the Sonoma Community Center. <laughs> Hello, Gerardo. Hey, Molly, what's up? It's been a long time, huh? I feel like it's been a long time. It feels like a long time, to Even be honest. Even though it's only been a weekend. No way. <laughs> There's no way it's been a weekend. It's been a weekend? Well, this is the time of year, December, huh. when you start to assess where did the time go. It must be the coma from all the food that I ate from the turkey, you know? I hear you. I uh, hear you. Thanksgiving. Ah. Yeah, we, our free Thanksgiving, Brutal. I didn't hear how many people came along, but I think they fed a lot of mouths. So it was it a lot was, of community spirit. Were you there? I was doing the flower tears, oh, no flower way. tears, decorations, that sort of thing. But Rotary Kitchen and Vintage House, especially Rotary, Gary Edwards, yeah. his whole team was here making food for hundreds. And it was beautiful, too. That's I right. Mean, that's picture right. Picture worthy. Yeah. You know, it was my first year helping them uh, cut the turkeys and stuff. Oh, did you go down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there. Okay, great. I was there. Yeah, I was cutting the turkeys, cutting all the, the sausages and yeah. stuff. I was eating most of the time, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I got to my dinner, I'm like, mm, I'm kind of full today. I missed you. But I had to try. I had to try everything. So, Well, that's great. It's an annual thing. We do it every year. And shout out to volunteers that always help us with all these large events. And since we are on food and we're full. Yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe you can introduce our next guest. Yeah. You know what? It's hard to pronounce her last name. But I'm I know her name is Maria. Chef Maria. Cattiviel. There you go. I was like the Cap whole morning. I'm like, Cattiviel, Cattiviel. All right. Yeah. We got Chef Maria Cattiviel today. Welcome, Maria. Welcome, Maria. Thank you for inviting me. It's very yeah. exciting. Yeah, I know. She has a class today, so she's super, 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 super popular here. You are. And before we get into everything, we're going to ask you all a sorts lot of, of questions. questions. Yes. But first of all... Welcome. Uh, your classes are so popular. Every time you cook, I am lucky to be working and smell in the halls how good it is. Oh my God, it's delicious. And you know, it's my favorite. Every time I talk to people, they say that she's the best. She just has a charisma with the people. The way she teaches is awesome. So we love to have her here. Thank what are you, you cooking tonight? Pasta. Mm -hmm. We are making a pumpkin ravioli with oh. butter and sage sauce. I save you some for you. <laughs> yes. Forget that diet. I'm yeah. never going to go on a diet as long as I work. But why go on a diet? Who goes on a diet on, on like Christmas time? I would never go on Nobody a diet. goes on a diet. No, Come no, on. no, no. Food is too good. Yeah. Welcome. Before we kind of launch into it, Gerardo and I were talking, and if I remember right, how did you find the community center? Was it through our program director, Liz? Because I remember you being here prior to COVID teaching. Yes, I met Liz uh, about uh, 12 years ago wow. and, and I started teaching here and I love it. It was a surprise for me because I thought actually it was Elise, you know, right. who, who brought you in. And I'm like, oh no, Elise brought you And she's like, no, 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 no. It was before Elise. I'm like, what? Oh yeah. You've been here for a while. As long as I've been here. I remember you coming on. Wow. Board. So good. A few things as well. I'm going to let Gerardo kind of take the lead here, but I'm so curious as to where you were born, you growing up. I took a peek at your website, but we have a lot of questions. Should we start from the beginning? Yeah, we should. Where are you from? Like, where's your family from too? Well, I was born in Venezuela, in Caracas, Venezuela. Venezuela. Uh, from Italian immigrants. Okay. From Abruzzo. Uh -huh. And they were very involved with the food. My mom uh, made pastas and actually my dad taught her how to cook. Uh, oh, he really? was a farmer in, <laughs> in the mountains of Abruzzo. And okay. uh, he was the one that knew how to make cheese, how to make bread. He taught my mom uh, how to and cook. And they immigrated from? Abruzzo. He, Abruzzo, okay. okay. To Venezuela. To Venezuela. Wow. And Abruzzo too, was it like a longtime family farm? 
or do you come from a line of farmers? My dad's side. My mom okay. was from the city. Yeah. Uh, she was a city girl. So, uh, yeah, my dad uh, came from a long line of farmers. Nice. Well, we can tell your food is amazing. I heard from stories that my grandma was the best cheesemaker. Oh, no way. Uh, yes. So, wow. And he, when he went to the military, he got relief uh, weekends so he could bring cheese. <laughs> from, from I'm gonna allow that. Wow, wow. I have a big heart for cheeses, especially from the Italians. There's a local family here, the Bellas, that have been a long time. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They have a cheese right around the corner, Second Street. And yeah, exactly. Oh, and best stories. And it's still in the family. And I love that. How, you know, so, Maria, so I was doing a little research and I know I saw that you have a book called uh, The Secrets of Baking with the Olive Oil? Yes. Wow. I didn't know a lot about you, to be honest. I, I started Google you, and I'm like, oh, she has a YouTube channel, too. And I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> well, that started in, during the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. I was so bored, and, and <laughs> that was a project I wanted to do, so I had the time to engage with the YouTube. I haven't done anything lately but uh yeah that was yeah. a lot of fun nice nice i didn't see you have a pizza one though i was looking for your pizza recipe <laughs> to be honest i heard your pizza recipe is amazing so i actually have like 10 recipes for pizza oh no I, way i can yes. share uh, all of them i know you too. share one with me with thing it was like white wine i think mm -hmm. one of the secrets Whoa, not a secret anymore okay white wine in the crust or white wine in the dough as like in, in the dough yeah i mean yeah yeah to make Ooh. your dough so and oh, i, I want to oh. try it i want to try it to be honest i was like oh i need to try this recipe. is that where the secrets are it's really in the crust and then the toppings are just kind of secondary because anybody can do anything right but well baking is hard though it's like a science you have to measure everything yeah. or either measure everything or weight everything that's what i heard so and plus the heat ah. like high temperature oven is better for pizza that's oh. the other secret and the ingredients like good quality olive oil yeah the tomatoes is very important and then yeah like you said you can add anything you want yeah yeah That's why I'm not a baker. It's not my forte, to be honest. It's hard for me because you have to measure things. And I'm like the eye kind of guy. It's like, I, I eyeball it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he does ceviche. And you do are ceviche, doing, yeah. Because you're a pastry chef. Were you yeah, trained I in a pastry I am a professional chef, right? pastry chef. Wow. Yes. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to Venezuela. Growing up, were you always interested in farming and learning about culinary and chef and all that. Did your dad share any recipes and stuff with you? Yeah, he made salumis and actually I became vegetarian That's so after funny. that <laughs> because he made all these things and well, I had some experience uh, like seeing some animals dying. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I kind of decided to <laughs> become vegetarian for a while. Were for you a teenager? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 I find that sometimes teen girls, it goes other ways and I was a vegetarian. I'm not anymore, but it me was... Either. When yeah. you said that, it took me a few years back when uh, I had a pig in my house that we needed to kill so we can make carnitas. <laughs> when you were And, really young? Yeah. But no, no, no. I was I was old. I had my kids. Uh, my kid, I think, was like three years old, my oldest now. Mm -hmm. And we tried to kill this pig and we couldn't hit the, the point. Oh, And we were right just on. like torturing the, the pig. I feel bad. And my kid's like, stop it, stop it. So now he cannot eat pork. Yeah. <laughs> He cannot you scarred eat pork. Him. I know. Not I to mention bad. you're going to have Peta up in our <laughs> joint. <laughs> Don't tag them. I know. But it is a part of life that when you are a farmer and it's important to know where produce and where your meat and everything comes from, really. We're so I think far the farmers are that. really respectful, though, when it comes to like killing animals yes. and stuff. So it's definitely one of those things where they know, you know, it's like we just kill to eat. You know, it's a, it's a way of living in Mexico, Venezuela, yeah. and those places. So everybody who's a farmer. Yeah. Talk about localism. <laughs> That's really, you're all, well, that was just a means of survival and how yeah. you feed your family back then. You were kind of learning how to cook, but not really much till later. Didn't you go in a different direction at first or did your parents want you to go in a different direction? Yes. I am a computer engineer. What? 
told you. <laughs> so, yeah, they didn't want me to cook or they want me to be a doctor. And I actually, I love learning. I love yeah. studying. So I, I love being in college and all the experience. But I always was passionate about food. So I will cook and try recipes. If I go to a bookstore, I will choose uh, a cookbook. Yeah. So I always was interested in So food. and then when you came to the United States then? You were in Venezuela uh, and you were born there and then you came to the United States. When? And wait, I want to tag on that. You said you went to college. Was it over there in Venezuela? Yes. Okay. Oh, no way. So yeah. you pretty much grew up in Venezuela then. Yeah, I, I came in 2000. Uh, my husband was finishing school and uh, got a job. So we decided to move uh, to Berkeley. Oh, straight to Berkeley. Wow. And is that when you decided you were going to take a different direction? Yeah, uh, without uh, my parents' influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we need to be far away yeah, to really yeah. do the things that we want to do. <laughs> so I went to a California Culinary Academy to explore and they made it so easy. The idea, I was like, maybe this is too expensive. I shouldn't do it. And then they say, no, you can get a loan. You can do this. You Those can do loans. that. loans. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am like, hmm, maybe this is what I want to do. And what um, year did you graduate? In 2003. So it was like a two-year, three-year course? 20 years course? ago. About one year. One year? The pastry okay. chef. Nice. I actually was interested, although I love all the cooking, I was really interested in the pastry. Like all the science, and also I wanted to make uh, chocolate pieces, art. Oh, really? Have you made any? Yeah. Yeah, uh, but I didn't end up being that kind of pastry chef, but I did a project with chocolate. So amazing. Like I the seen the chocolate those. sculpture. Yeah. Oh, Have uh, you the, seen the, those? Did you see that show? Well, yeah, but this is a special guy. I think he's French and he's like in Las Vegas or something. And he creates these amazing things. I, I just, thought they had a competition show. I think they did. And that. he was the judge, I think. He was the judge there. Maria, it's not too late. I know, Maria. Can we sign you up? To <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yes. Maybe we'll come back. Another thing, too, when you got to Berkeley, I don't know if it coincided with culinary school, but I saw that you really got into, especially a lot of the vegetarian places, working over at Chez Panisse with Alice Waters. I mean, that's an old school vibe of getting things local from the farm and stuff. Am I right? Yeah, that was amazing. I did a kind of an apprenticeship uh, program they have. It was about six months. It was amazing. I peel hundreds of apples, mm -hmm. divide uh, hundreds of eggs for the gelato, oh, wow. and have big talks. Like they met after shift to decide the following week menu. So it's, it was amazing. Like uh, having that experience, listening to the menus and designing the dessert for that specific menu. And then eating the leftover from the day before was the best mm. thing ever. <laughs> I would get a job just for that. I would clean dishes just have yeah, leftover yeah. chaise panis. <laughs> <laughs> and other places as well in San Francisco, right? It, yeah, I had a lot of fun at the Rose Pistola in North Beach. Uh -huh. That was one of my favorite jobs and uh, Market Hall in Berkeley. Uh, I also work uh, at uh, the waterfront. and uh, the one in Sausalito? No, actually the San Francisco one. On the other side? Uh, close to the ferry building. Okay. Oh, oh, I have been there. Yeah, because it has like an enclosed kitchen Right, that used to be on the water, but they close it off. I don't know. I went there many, many years ago. Has a yeah, beautiful was. view. And then the townhouse in Emeryville, that was also a fun experience. And I did a project for Visa Tui Winery. Where's that winery? In Santa Elena. Oh, okay. With Chef Gerardo. Oh, no, another that. Chef G out that. there. Another Gerardo. Wow, another Gerardo. <laughs> huh? Oh, I see. He, he made the best mozzarella from scratch. Oh, no way. I can, always want to make mozzarella. I know it seems pretty cool. Instruct how to make cheese as well. Yes, like mozzarella ricotta. Yes, I think she has a class coming up, and no, next year I think it will be uh, ricotta. I think you're mm -hmm. making, yeah. And then, so it sounds like you wrote a cookbook, a couple of them, or just one, just the olive oil. I have two. The first one was my sweet Abruzzo. Okay. And because every festivity in Italy, it, Italians have their own desserts and they have their names. 
So I wanted to write uh, about that. So I have the, that cookbook about the desserts of Abruzzo. And then, is it kind of like a love letter and memory to yeah. Abruzzo and all of? And this? actually, my experience as a immigrant kid in Venezuela. Okay. Oh, uh, in, I'd love to read that. Yeah, in an Italian community. Yes. It was uh, pretty incredible. Like a, a little bit isolated. Like maybe if you go to Chinatown here. Yes. So those communities are very close together. There's a lot of big community of Italians everywhere, right? In South America. Because yes. I know uh, the Italians have a big influence on the Argentinas. They have all these sausages. and Some of the best pizza I ever had was in Zipolite in Mexico no when they, we were there. Yeah, we found it on the last night, but it was the little Italians that had come over and set up wow. an out-air kind of pizzeria oven as well as... Um, of course, my favorite had like trapeze hanging, you know, all these kind of the fun things to do. Yeah, one of my best pizzas was in Sao Paulo, actually. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so there are many Italians in Sao Paulo. And they, this was an authentic Italian restaurant. And it was one of the best pizzas I have eaten in my life. Italians conquer the world. I think they were doing what the Chinese were doing, like sending a group of people everywhere. They had some in Mexico, too, where they were sending people because they want to expand, expand the, their, you know. So they're the big community in Mexico City with the Chinese and yeah. Japanese, actually, too. So it was like, I think the Japanese was more like the emperor were sending like people okay. everywhere. Do you know what made your father decide to come to Venezuela? Was it? Your work? mother, or was it work? or No, it was uh, after the World War. Uh, a lot of immigrants. So I have family in New York, and I have family in Connecticut. I think I have family in Argentina and Belgium, so everywhere. You're all over uh -huh. uh -huh. Is your last name, I don't know why I didn't ask this before, but is it your married last name? Yes. So you married in Italian as well? No, that's or, a French uh, last name. Oh, that's name. a French last name. What's your maiden name? Di Gregorio. Di Gregorio. Di Gregorio. <laughs> Di Gregorio. Oh, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I cannot roll my R's. You know, you know both of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So he's French, like from France, or no French descendant? Okay, French descendant. And you met in Venezuela? Yeah, while I was engineer. So we met in in that uh, community, like at work. Yeah. And his family was in the United States? No, his family uh, was in Venezuela. In Venezuela. Yeah. And then how do you immigrate to like United States though? Well, he wanted to do a master in United States. So he got into Berkeley and... Computer uh, science as well? Master in business. Oh, okay. So yeah, he went to school and then uh, we got married and... Yeah. Berkeley's not a bad place to come to. Yeah. Do you still live down there? No, I live in Danville. Danville, yeah. Okay. Where's East Danville? Bay. East Bay? Yeah, right? East Bay? Yes. Yeah. Nice. But I love uh, Berkeley and my experience there was amazing. Speaking of pizza, what's your thoughts on the East Coast pizza? You said the best pizza you've had is probably like San Paolo. Thin crust. Like what's your crust experienced? I love uh, the thick crust. Almost like a focaccia, kind of. Oh, really? Oh, like ready. in Rome, they sell it by yes. the meter. In the squares. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can buy fi good. five meters of pizza. I have. have. Five meters of pizza? I mean, it was 25 years ago, but I <laughs> ate enough pizza. <laughs> Fill everything. <laughs> love, wow. love it. And the thin crust oh, is amazing, too. Like, I, I love all, all kinds. That's one of my favorite uh, foods. Do you see that? Gosh, I guess I've been watching a lot of Netflix for the past couple of years. And I do always watch the cooking shows <laughs> right now. I'm watching Julia or whatever. But there was a pizza one where they go and they test out the best pizzas in the world. And there was a guy that was down in New Mexico, I think, making the best pizzas. So do you try them out everywhere you go? Well, I am not sure everywhere I go, but I visit my family when I was a kid in New York. And uh, my mom's aunt had like five uh, pizzerias and oh, they wow. make pizzas this huge. I think it's New York style. I'm not yeah. sure. You fold it in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that was amazing. There's like, a guy in, in Instagram who goes around and visits all the pizzerias and he grades them. So he yeah. gives like, oh, this one is a 7.2, but he only takes two bites out of the pizza. And he likes these pizzas to be firm, not flappy, firm like this. So he takes a bite at the bottom and then he goes on the crust and then he goes 
Okay. Only cheese pizza. He doesn't do anything else oh, except okay. cheese pizza. Okay. So he does a uh, new is heaven. He, she is likes. he six? No, <laughs> six years old. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he's pretty funny, though. He goes around and he, he's pretty sincere, too. He's like, nah, I, I give it a six. But yeah. his highest score is like eight. Oh, so okay. if you get he's an eight, it's really 10. good. No, no, no. He, he's like, to get a 10 is like, I have to go to Italy. He's made himself a critic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty popular, though. Like, people oh, actually really? want him to go and taste their pizza because he has like millions of followers. So if he oh. says it's an eight, that place is full. What's his name? Don't know. Okay. Well, next time Maria is having a pizza class, let's get him up here. <laughs> I think he came to California and tasted some pizzas. Okay. And he did pretty good on the review. So yeah, it was I pretty think nice. there's some good ones out there. But there's got to be more than pizza, too. So do you have a sweet tooth? I yeah, she's yeah. a baker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I have a, a totally a sweet tooth. <laughs> the breads and the sweets. What else? Uh, tell us a little bit more, because how do you write a book? I mean, I you're cooking and everything. Do you just find an intense interest in olive oil and the making of olive oil? Or how did you start to just choose the subject? With the olive oil book, I became uh, dairy intolerant. So I, I remember my mom using olive oil instead of butter in most of the pastries, like the traditional pastries. So I started experimenting with that. And then I thought uh, maybe this can be useful for people. So I am going to write a book and I love olive oil, extra yeah. virgin olive oil, good quality extra virgin olive oil. So I went to UC Davis and took uh, the certification for uh, being a tester, yeah. which I w won't work with that. <laughs> like the, the, yeah, like tasting hundreds of olive oil. I don't think that would be my strong part, but I loved learning about the defects, how to pick your olive oil, like a good quality olive oil. And then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I play around with my favorite recipes and trying to transform them with olive oil. And with my science uh, background, you can play around uh, like uh, formulas and uh, percentages and try to make it close to the flavors I wanted. Ah. It's funny, there's places in Spain where one town only uses like olive oil and then there's one town that only uses butter. <laughs> and, the, you know, and yeah. all they use is butter for their recipes. And then some just use oil, which is amazing. I like butter, too. So I like them both. I feel like olive oil really took off here around Sonoma County, maybe late 80s, early 90s. I do remember my aunt coming out in the early 90s to go olive oil tasting, which she made herself sick, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty rich. Then there's a place here, a jacuzzi. B.R. Cohn started Cone's doing too. their own olive okay. oils a long time ago. But we were just driving through Nicasio when you go out the coast down to Marin. We came over and there's a huge olive grove there. I don't know who it is. I can't remember the name, but just massive trees set up like vineyards, actually. I'd never seen that many. It's funny because me coming from like a Mexican family, we don't use olive oil that much. We usually lard. You yeah. know, our thing is lard or either canola oil. And then my father-in-law is like, no, we use olive oil in this house. So all we use <laughs> is olive oil. And I feel sometimes like for Mexican food, we need that a special lard flavor <laughs> in our stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know, like the, our beans doesn't taste the same with olive oil than if it does with uh, lard, you know, or canola oil, yeah. you know, the bad stuff. I like, the, I like fresh olive oil. It's got you kind do, of a grassy huh? taste a little bit. Do you like it extra or you like it like light? Because it has a different flavor, like the extra is a little bit strong Yeah. than, you know, the regular. She's the pro. I, don't I know. know. I, I, like, I like for salads, what will you use for salads? Extra virgin. Yeah. Extra. For everything, mostly for the health benefit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but good lard, good quality lard, people are recognizing that can be healthy too. Like uh, if it's not processed, uh, like uh, certain temperatures, okay. hydrogenation is supposed to be pretty bad for you. But yeah. for the health benefits and the antioxidants, extra virgin olive oil should be the only option in olive oil. Wow. Do you have some favorites? Yes, I have a lot of <laughs> favorites. I love uh, California Olive Ranch. I like Lucini. California Olive Ranch, I use it for like, I have several olive oils in my house, but that's for baking or because it's less expensive. Yes. Lucinic is an Italian olive oil that is fantastic. And California Olive Ranch bought it. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> so They recognize. 
It's part now, and they have farms in Argentina. They have farms in, uh, in several places. I also like Corto, which is uh, local. Uh, I don't uh, Petalu. I don't remember. I visit the production, and it was fantastic. But I don't remember if it was Petaluma or. But Corto is a fantastic olive oil, and Seca Hills is very expensive. But I adore that olive oil for my salads or finishing up. So I have it more like a, I, I won't bake with that one because it's, it's special, very expensive. You want to taste it on its own. Anything from it. Costco because I buy olive oil from <laughs> Costco. I'm sorry. Well, there is a book and there is a website called Extra Virginity. And he kind of uh, evaluates uh, several olive oils. So sometimes if I don't know the olive oil that, I, that I'm going to buy, I check uh, his list. Mm -hmm. he, he actually has a list of the ones that, because there is um, fraud in the olive oil industry. Right away. So they Just mix. like the winery too, the wine too, you yeah, know, it's everywhere. Yeah, they mix things that are not really olive oil and they call it Italian. Maybe oh. there, there was only package in Italy, but people will will pay more because it's Italian. So it's, I prefer to check on that too, even if I did this certification. Yeah. Because it's hard What's to recognize uh, ex okay. extra virginity. I think it's okay. extra virginity. <laughs> don't come. I love it. What a good list. <laughs> extra virginity. Folks. Extra virginity. Olive oil. Oh, I love that. Because, yeah. I mean, that happens a lot in all industries. You know, yeah, like honey, maple syrup. Honey, or, yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. the wine also is being cloned, you know. Well, I mean, That's why they came out with like organic certifications, but there's ways to get around and label things differently. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean I, what I it try says. to go for the production. Who yeah. The person that does or the company that does olive oil, I try to learn how they do it. People love olive oil, but I hated their fruit, man. I used to be a gardener. Oh, oh it's a really <laughs> hard one. Uh, olive oil, like people are like, oh, I love olive oil. I hate their trees. When I was a gardener, <laughs> I hated their trees. I ran a place in Sonoma that the Greeks had. There's a huge tree. I think the tree is dying, but it's so beautiful right now. You know, it still has all these amazing Like, I don't know how you get any kind of liquid out of this hard <laughs> olive that's on this tree, right? Or it's even if it's a type I of I like tree. when it flowers, but then it's when beautiful. it turns it's into that fruit and you're like, hmm. Oh, I think it's... And it's in thing. the ground, you're stepping on it and you try to like sweep it and then <laughs> it's everywhere. That's how I feel about plums, but come on. <laughs> it's hard to harvest, but there are places that the Macavoy, I think, if you bring your olives, mm -hmm. they extract the oh, olive wow. oil for you. And in Livermore, it's... McAvoy? Uh, I think that's the one I drove by that I'm trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I that's think it's it. McAvoy. It's on the way to Nicasio and... I think they had to do it when they're green, right? The olive is green and then they smash it in there to get the liquid, right? You can't do it when the fruit is soft. I don't think so. No, there is a time, October. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a time when to, they have to like you process... You have to harvest. I've missed harvest. I think you have... <laughs> they're I mean, starting if, to if turn. If like your a, fruit is... Purple, it's gone. They're getting, I think. Yeah, they're getting yeah, kind of purple. Yeah, I think they're, they're when they're green. I think that's when they... It's perfect for flower arrangements, which is mm -hmm. what I do. <laughs> Now they're perfect for martinis. Yeah, and there you go. They're just pretty. I love it. Okay. I don't know. I'm just talking. Maria's like, okay. Well. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I, I am not an uh, expert on martinis. Not me either. <laughs> I know you were doing kind of a few classes here, but now I look and I think you're having like a class once a month. Am I right? Yes. yes. Least, yeah. Coming up here. Yeah. She's so popular. So you are. We're, we're trying to keep her here now. And maybe give us like an overall general, some of the classes that maybe you are bringing back for 2024 or that you are trying or want to school us a little bit of what they are. Well, uh, the pasta workshop is amazing because you can uh, make pasta seasonal, like the ravioli. For example, right now, during the fall, the pumpkin ravioli is amazing. And then you can use beets, you can use pretty much spinach, ricotta. And my idea of the classes is more like a experience. When I visit my family in the farm in, in Italy, I remember I will arrive and I was this girl from uh, Venezuela kind of a city girl, and then they will put me to cook. And we talk and we cook together. Everyone was involved in the kitchen. It was so amazing. Like uh, I, I wanted to recreate that experience I yeah. had 
in my class. And then you eat together. Yeah, exactly. exactly. At the end, and we eat together. We cook together, everyone as a team, and then we eat together. And then everything is from scratch, right? You guys make your own dough and stuff like that, right? And you got your little machines that you press and yes, stuff, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I've seen it. And then they also like the focaccia classes. I love bread. It's one of my favorite things to make. So I, I have done the, the focaccia classes, the pizza classes. Yeah, and how to make ricotta because also like I, I love the idea of teaching the how to do things. I love to learn how to do things. Like, uh, and she has another class coming in December too. In the fifth, she does. She's doing uh, holiday breads, which is sold out. People uh, sold out right. too. Yeah, so. panettone. We're going to make panettone and a braid that I learned uh, that is beautiful with cranberries and oh, lemon. Oh, my lemon mother icing. used to make a braided <laughs> holiday bread. It was like a lemon raisin kind of thing, but oh, the same thing, the braided bread. And she went keto, and now I'm like, oh. you're breaking my heart. Where's my braided bread? And so nice. That nice. sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, in December 8th, she's going to have more classes open in our website. So for our tapas, so by the she's time having this tapas. Comes out, yeah, like, by the time. Oh, tapas. She, yeah, on what January, kind? right? Yes. So we are uh, Italian tapas, like a mini pizzas, yeah. uh, crostini. Oh, uh, this is of. perfect. Have you done anything like from Venezuela or any type of food from there or no? Actually, when I tell people uh, I was born in Venezuela, several times they ask me, hey, why don't you do a class? So I have done uh, arepas, ceviche. I have done oh, nice, ceviche. nice. I, we, maybe we can do like a <laughs> comparing. Super different, super different, because maybe yours is better. It's close to, uh, I think, Peruvian. Peru. So yes, the Peruvian is- ceviche, is, that's, that's where they started. So and that's where ceviche came from. Yep, they invented it pretty much, and then everybody else. Oh, well, we maybe make it like this. You guys this. can have a ceviche off and have. They, they have yeah, they have ceviche. a thing called uh, leche de tigre. That's what they use on the ceviche, which yeah. is oh, like a, they call them like milk tiger milk. Oh, I think they used to make that down in Maya. They had like a sh- coconut milk shrimp. I love that one. Yeah, what but they do is can we I, have think, I, I from think they each country. <laughs> <laughs> what they do, I that. think, what they do is they they cook their ceviche, their fish with lime juice, and then they use the lime juice from their brine to do their leche de tigre, which they add like celery and ginger and all this stuff, and then they blend it and then they add it back to the ceviche. You said the ceviche that kind of comes from Venezuela. What are the ingredients? I actually do more like a South American tapas. So uh-huh. the ceviche I make is Peruvian. Yeah. No, okay. in Venezuela they do more arepas uh-huh. and then uh, carne mechada, which is like a shredded meat. So I do so that. So we do machaca. That's what we okay. call it. In Mexico, they do the meat. They put it in the sun with just salt uh-huh. for like three or four days. And then they take it back and then they start hitting it with a rock and it shreds. They make breakfast with it. Like they do machaquita, they call it, with eggs and stuff. You can do By the way, put- I love uh, Mexican food. I think it's one of the best foods ever. <laughs> I had experience with friends that cook from scratch and the barbacoa and all the amazing. Yeah, I try to do a barbacoa here for September, I think, for our Mexican independence kind of thing. I want to do it in the hall. Remember we had yeah, the yeah, plan? Yeah. Uh-huh. I missed it. I got sick. Yes, so. I know. But there's always the future. There's never a bad time for yeah. Italian or Mexican cooking coming from the culinary department, especially yours, Maria. And I'm always thinking like, what can I serve these people here that they haven't tried? Because here yeah. people think about tacos and there's more than tacos in Mexico than just tacos. There's chilies, rellenos and all this stuff. And I'm like, I need to bring it back to the people. I want them to try things that they're not going to see in the restaurants. That's my view. So... I think so. This is always a good place to try it out. So like machaquita, I did machaca last time and uh, Josh didn't know what it was. I'm like, I'll do you a breakfast. i treat you well. <laughs> and then he tried, he's like, what is this? And I told him it was horse meat. I'm like, it's dry horse meat, well, man. that is no <laughs> way to sell a class, Gerardo. <laughs> and no he's way. like, oh, it's pretty good. I'm like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. And then after he finished, I'm like, I'm lying, dude. It's cow. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but it's pretty good. It's the process of that meat. It's amazing how they put it in the sun. They dry it. And then they use volcano rock to hit it. Oh, wow. Okay. And then they just met. So first they have to put it and soak it in water after they have it in the sun. They soak it in water. So when you hit it with the rock, it shreds and it comes out apart. And it's, it's tasty, <laughs> you know, amazing. 
Well, call me when you make, uh, make it. <laughs> you know, the thing is, I got my family, when they go to Mexico and they come back, they always bring me things. So they always have like, oh, there's a little town in where I'm from that they make this especially. So I'm like, can you give me five kilos of that thing? <laughs> so they bring five kilos of just dry and shredded machaca. Where is that? In Mazatlan. And then the town is uh, Villa Unión. So it's a little town from Mazatlan. And they make it. Ah. I, I now have an order for the scallops that come out. Oh, of yeah. Uh, she, we do a callo de hacha. So we use, you know, the scallops. Mm -hmm. Here are soft. The ones that we get from Mazatlan are a little bit more tougher, but they're super soft when you put them in lime juice, when you cook them in lime juice. I do agua chile for oh, my yeah. friend. And I don't even eat spicy food. And I, I know. I love it right? so much. Okay. Oh, yeah. Last time I did really it, it was delicious. super spicy. It was like. 20 serranos. In my, <laughs> it was so good, <laughs> though. There's something really fresh tasting about yeah, it. Yeah. And it's the onions and the cucumber and stuff, you know. Yeah. All of that anyway. Like in Mazatlan, we do uh, smoked marlin, too. They smoke the marlin with the mangroves. They call them the mangroves. It's the bushes that are in the water. You find them in the Everglades and stuff like that. So they use those trees to smoke their marlin. And it's just oh, delicious. <laughs> I love it. Maria, you're still living town in Danville, you said. Do you farm? Do you have space to do a little garden? Or do you have time to do a little garden? I'm just laughing because we just talked about it when we're I, outside. Uh, I am the worst gardener <laughs> ever. I joined a, a garden club yeah, in Walnut yeah. Creek. And uh, I am learning a little bit. But uh, yeah. yeah, everything I plant, die. But uh, I worry. love cooking. With, I, uh, I was a floral designer for... 20 something years. Me too. My garden is just sad and I'll throw some fava beans on that. And call <laughs> hey, you it know, it's funny. I was talking to uh, Maria outside and we find out that we both know Lisa Lovigetto from back in the days oh, because okay. she used to work in Ramekins. I think I saw that somewhere. So, yeah, so and I work for General's daughter, which yeah, was right, right next, next to it. And but she started a thing in two thousand and four, and I left in two thousand and three. So we we a never met. We didn't yeah, cross we didn't cross path. path at all. But it was really cool. Like we had that connection. You know. Yeah, Ramekins so. was a gem, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful place, and uh, people were very nice. Yeah. Well, we got that here. I We're see the paintings stuck. here. They are everywhere. Like in, in the uh, Rotary Kitchen, there is this beautiful painting with the chef Over talking. The chef sitting down. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Super I Italian. Love... Looks like super Italian, right? That picture. Yeah, that is, I can't not believe I'm blanking right now. She's our neighbor. She owned the general's daughter, Suzanne. Suzanne, Brandon. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. That's and her name. I think invested in Ramekins too. Yeah. So when she opened her other restaurant. Saddles. Saddles. A lot of that artwork. And. Apparently, she has a lot of artwork. So she donated all of that because her partner, Jack, has done a lot of work here. We call it the house that Jack rebuilt because he's done a lot of keeping up with this building and pretty much built the fiber arts room, you know, all the cabinets and stuff. So, yeah, they have a lot of invested and, and we love them. They're great. So And Ramekins was a big part of that. And yeah, reviving yeah. the general's daughter. I remember before yeah. it was the general's daughter. For next year, we're going to have a lot of classes with Maria. So yeah. just uh, people look at our website. We're going to have Maria and Lisa Lovigetto too. Oh, and so myself. you're bringing back the Ramekins general's yeah, daughter. Yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah. Reviving. Oh, also, we have Shauna too. You know, uh -huh. Shauna Davis, yes. I think that's her name. Shauna. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, you know. There's right now we're working everyone. with uh, with Maria. She has a, an idea where we're going to do farmer's market to table. That's what we're talking about for next oh, year. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, because uh, Friday the farmer's market is around the corner. Oh, I know that one very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought how beautiful would be like uh, taking the students or meeting at the farmer's market, bringing some produce to the kitchen. And then make a, like a simple lunch, but uh, with all the produce, like maybe a savory tart and Ugh. some uh, fruit dessert, some things Sign beautiful and simple. Up. I'll <laughs> meet you down there. Paul's Produce, Laszlo and the Patch. The farmer's market on Friday here is all year long. So there's never yeah. a bad time to do that. And all the vendors are there. I forget her name, the Greek lady that has all the amazing dips and stuff. But how lucky are we? I Have know, you on board? And yeah. I mean, I, I can see how that would be very popular. So Friday morning farmer's market where it's not a like Tuesday night party. Yeah, it's really yeah. about the produce and learn how to make lunches out of it. Yeah, And connect so. with the farmers. Yeah, like a, exactly. Learning from them. The bread guy. 
like well, the I, baker. I, I know you the know Mike, guy. right? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's amazing too. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, so, so that, that'll be a really good class. So we're, we're yeah. thinking about it. So we're trying to do something with it. Yep, 2024. Yeah. Also, we have something special for Valentine's Day we're planning too. So that'll be really cool too. We're going to call it the Lady and the Tramp. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be a dinner making pastas with uh, Chef Maria here. So it'll be really cool. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> we're trying to get some music going on and everything. It'll be a nice Are dinner. Are dogs invited to this class? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, that's yeah. going to be an easy yeah. graphics. I already see it. I love that movie, by the way. I love. And I love Italy, too. I definitely grew up, and I think I have, like, a small Italian part, but I lied and said I had a whole bunch of Italians, but I don't. I don't really, but it's such a beautiful climate, and no gardening. What would you like to do if you were not cooking and you got thoughts of, like, another book, or is it teaching? Is it all culinary or travel? Knitting, dancing. I, I love dancing, but oh, no, that, that is not a thing that I do often. But, uh, I love it. We uh, have classes. <laughs> I should join. But I love nature. I hike. I, I Were love. you on a hike today when I call you, by the yes. way? Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I like a, a hike behind the Berkeley University. I oh, love that one. It's beautiful up there. And Mont Diablo has so many, in Danville um, uh, and Walnut Creek, uh, has so many beautiful places to hike. I think Friday is going to turn into a day with Maria. We'll go to Farmer's Market, come do lunch, and then work it off and go up to the Sonoma C- yeah. Cemetery, yeah. Overlook yeah. Trail, and Finish hike it off. Hike. Day with Maria. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> a day with Maria. That a sounds day really with good, Maria. You know? Just going to put this out here. I don't know where we're going as far as time-wise, but Haroto always has something to ask about the questions around here. Food. Well, we know she loves Mexican food. Yeah. So. Do you have any special places where you live There's Mexican that's really good? Or your favorite food? Mexican food. <laughs> Just Mexican, Just huh? Mexican. <laughs> no, that's a difficult one. Because I usually go uh, some Berkeley places, but they are more kind of California. The top of my head, I can remember. Yeah. But yeah. I, li- I like several uh, restaurants in Berkeley. Yeah. So... Nice. Well, if you ever here in Sonoma, and if you want to try really good tacos, here we go. Our tacos. unofficial sponsor, yeah, not sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need to try Costa Tacos. They're delicious. One of the best tacos there, out there for me. And I try a lot of tacos, but they're uh, just amazing the way they cook them. So, Costa Tacos, here we come. And you know where you can find them on the day that you don't want to cook on Friday. The farmer's market on Friday. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're there. <laughs> they're amazing. They really are. I believe them. Yeah, they're really good. One of the best places. I actually don't go anywhere now except there. I just wait for them. <laughs> to be honest, I'm like, nope. We've had events here, dancing events, and people have shown up here, and they didn't know we were having an event. They just track wherever Costa's tacos yeah, are going. Yeah. Oh, okay. You were thinking and if you're that. ever in Napa, try Mother Tacos. Really good. Also, <laughs> not as good as Costa Tacos, but they're good. And I had the experience to eat uh, Mexican food from uh, families. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. So different. So, it's, so different. It's amazing. Pozole, for oh. example, my friend made the pozole once, and uh, it was amazing. The barbacoa. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that experience has been... Uh, mole. Have you tried mole? Yes. Oh, so delicious. Mole. It has like over 50 or 60 ingredients. To make I have mole. Seen that. It has nuts. It has all these bread, chilies, apples, bananas. I mean, even chocolate. Yeah. So, you know. What can be wrong? With, I know with chocolate, with, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like taking colors and putting it in a food and it all turns to chocolate eventually. I think people need to take a trip to Mexico and really try the culinary down there. It's just so different. It's just beautiful. Everything from scratch. Even the tortillas, they don't make it from our flour here. They might actually have the maize, have the corn. They grind it. They make the flour from there. It's just amazing, amazing. If we were going to go down there, but I was going to go over to Italy again, what would you recommend going to see? Where would you like to go to? Where else too? In Berkeley, I love uh, Corso. It's pretty amazing. They make their own pasta. Uh Bellanico is a fantastic restaurant as well. And then um, Pizzaiolo, 
You cannot make reservations. You, you just go and, and wait. Oh, good. So that, like that, that one doesn't Pizza have a Pizza YOLO. All that's right, a very, all right. That's a very good one. Yeah, yeah uh, there are so many. There's amazing little like herb co-op down there. I can't tell you exactly where it is going down to the college. And they always make up a little tea for me that they leave out in like a, a little bag. I love it so much. <laughs> it's old school. Rose hips and all sorts of stuff. But that's what I love about Berkeley. Yeah. You know, I, I don't spend a lot of time in Berkeley. <laughs> I just go through it sometimes, but. It's beautiful. Is it? Yeah. Nice. Up in the hills everywhere. Yes. I go dinners or when I'm going to meet friends from San Francisco. Are you it's close like to I'm, the bay? Are you close to the waterfront or something? Uh, most uh, Rock Ridge, most uh, closer to Auckland is where I usually go. Oh, nice. And there are so many new restaurants as well in Piedmont Avenue. Try like Magoo, I think it's called, and it's uh, Colombian. Wow. I love it. We have a lot of artists that come up here lately from the East Bay. Our artist in residence right now, Daniel, is from the East Bay right now, currently living in Oakland. And so was Fred DeWitt. He oh, lived yeah, in Berkeley, right. taught over at university. So there's a lot. There's a big Thai connection between. Yeah. I think yeah. it's it's relatively... Not that bad to get to and from if you can, you know, time it right. From Danville, yeah, from it's bridge. very easy. It's the 680. That bridge, though, the well, Richmond Well, come in bridge. here, but what Ooh. about going back? Well, you just got to time yeah, it the opposite. Yeah. 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 No, it's, uh, <laughs> timing is the key. Mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. if I leave uh, a tree, things can get oh, uh, yeah. bad to, to come here. <laughs> and then when I was working in Santa Elena, I remember I always Ooh. will live around... 2.30, mm -hmm. that was a good time to yeah. not get traffic. Wow. <laughs> Spend a lot of time in traffic. But I love there. the drive. This is one of my favorite places to We're, come. I mean, thoughts. It's a little Italy in the Sonoma exactly. County. It I, I like of, Italy. All right. I can, there is this feeling. Exactly. Yeah. It's got that same feeling. Well, we're really happy to have you here and uh, teaching classes and stuff, so... I'm excited for what will be coming in culinary 2024 yeah, yeah, between you, Gerardo, Lisa, Maria, everybody and yeah. everybody else that's coming. And what would you like to see to kind of round out? We've got a wonderful Italian cooks, Mexican. What else would you guys like to see kind of rounded out and learn more about or have teachers come on in their special? I want to have uh, actually like Japanese, Japanese food. Come, Japanese food. Yeah, yeah. Chinese also too. Have real Chinese food, real Japanese food. That'd be amazing to have. Also French. I mean, I would like to have somebody who can teach French food here. So we want to make it where it's open to everyone to come in. So if you're out there and you're listening and you know how to cook and you want to teach a class, come down. Yes. We'll give you a spot here. All right. Well, on that note, Maria, any last words? We are hoping you have an amazing class tonight. I'm excited to be working a little late so I can smell all the smells coming from the kitchen. <laughs> Again, I love being here. I love the creativity and uh, the ideas. So I, when I talk to Gerardo, all the ideas uh, seem yeah. amazing. <laughs> so uh, the openness to create. And uh, I feel that we all in the culinary are artists in a certain way. So I love that we can create things and make life for people uh, happier or better. Through, Absolutely. Fu through food. Through food, yeah, yeah. You need food. <laughs> food and conversation. Can't get better than that. And, con and, wine. and connection. And, connection. And, connection. And, and wine. Yeah. And wine, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other show, right? Mm. <laughs> By the way, all the classes include wine. I think wine kind of opens the people up, too. When you give them wine, they kind of feel a little Do bit a more loose. Do a lot of cooking with it, Yeah, too. yeah. I actually, sometimes I serve it before we eat. We're just like, oh, we're cooking. And we're like, hey, here, have a wine. And they, it feels like they open them up more. I feel they're more talkative. They're just yeah. more open, you know, so yeah. it's pretty cool. In the wine country. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here. in the wine country. Liquor. So. <laughs> <laughs> and food. And an yep, amazing yep, yep. country. Well, Maria, thank you. Thank yeah. you, thank you. And thank you. We'll good be luck looking today. for your next cookbook. You know, not even, not even <laughs> good luck because you don't need luck. You're good. Yeah, You're good. just good. Yeah, I yeah, hear yeah. great things. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very class. much, Maria. Take thank care. Thank you.